Hey guys, uh, I want to show you something cool. Um, so I'm just going to run this. Whoa! Something like a hundred balls bouncing around the screen. Um, I know you want to make something cool like that. Um, this is done using an array of objects. Okay, and this is going to be an exercise that I'm going to give you at the end of this. Uh, I'm going to give you a working starting point with a single bouncing ball and you're supposed to turn it into an array of bouncing balls. Okay, so that'll be fun. Uh, so the topic of this video is arrays of objects, and I'm going to do it by walking you through uh, the code from week six, week 6 code. So if you want to follow along on your own machine, you'll have to go get the Week 6 code file, unzip it, and put the Week 6 code folder into a project in IntelliJ. Um, there is a little bit of a gotcha. Uh, there's some starter code in here, including ball and bouncing balls for that exercise, and there's another exercise called the Starfield exercise, um, and when you initially get it, um, it, you'll see that there's an error in it. That, and that's intentional, like you're supposed to fill in some code here to fix the error. But unfortunately with IntelliJ, um, that prevents you from running any of the other parts of the code if it can't compile everything. So uh, what you'll have to do is either just temporarily remove test star field from your project, or you can uh, copy out, uh, sorry, comment out the animate method here like that. So that's what I've chosen to do. Anyway, just a little gotcha that exists in this week's code package. Um, I should probably separate them out at some point. I probably will do that. Okay, an array of objects. So let's talk about arrays of objects because that is a useful data structure. Um, so I've got a piece of code here. It's called array of objects examples. And you can see what I'm doing up here is I am, uh, we have a circle object. I should probably show you that. Oh, here it is right here. The circle object's already, already there. So let's just make maximum screen, screen space here. Uh, it's a pretty simple circle object. We've already seen a bunch of them in this course. It has a private variable for the radius. Uh, this one happens to have a static variable that it tracks the number of objects that have been created. So here's its constructor. You give it a radius. Um, you have a static thing to get the number of objects. You have a get radius method, a set radius method and a get area method that computes the area of the circle and for some reason does this print line here. Anyways, it doesn't really matter exactly what um, the object is. Um, what we're really looking at here is what it means to create an array of these objects. So as you know, uh, when we create a circle object, uh, sorry, when we create a circle class, we get a new type in the language called circle. So I can do something like this. I can say circle C like that, and that will create uh, a reference variable that could hold a circle. Um, and just like with any other type, when I put square brackets on it like that, um, it becomes an array type. So this is, I'm declaring here a variable that can hold an array of circle objects. Okay, now uh, this, this gets tricky because when you're creating an array of objects, with, with a regular array, you have to create the variable, declare the variable, then create the array, uh, and then you're done. Then you can initialize it or whatever if you want to, or process it. Uh, if it was an int array, that's, it would just be those two steps. But there's a kind of a third step with objects. Um, so first you have to declare the array variable. Then you have to create the array. And this gets confusing because it looks like you're calling the constructor here, but you are not. Note the square brackets. What we're doing here is we are creating an array of five circle references. And then here, now we're creating the circle objects themselves. So I'm creating a circle with radius uh, 0, then 2, then 4, then 6, then 8. So I'm creating a bunch of circle objects. And this is where I'm calling the constructor because uh, I'm using the round brackets here. So this is a constructor call for the circle object, whereas this is, I guess, a special constructor call for the special array object. Um, so I wanted to show you, just by way of pictures, what this actually looks like. And I think I can do it with a snip and then I can draw on what I get. So uh, there's some pictures in, the, in, the, um, in this week's handout as well. There we go. So I'm creating um, a reference variable here called a, and it's initially set to just the value null. So uh, it's, a, it's a reference variable, which means it contains a pointer or a reference or a memory address or however you want to call it. Uh, but when we start, we haven't created the array yet, so all we get is this null pointer. So that's what we get uh, here from this first line. Okay, then we do this second line here, and what we get now is we get uh, a new array. So this creates an array 
of one, two, three, four, five pointers numbered one, two, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, an array of references, uh, and gives us the reference back in A. So now this is a picture that we're used to, uh, but what's going on in each of these is these are these are null references. So these are initialized to be null references. So even though I've created an array of circle objects, you know, that's kind of how we would say that, I don't yet have an array, any actual circles. I had, I started with just the array variable A, which was null. Then I created um, the array, which is actually an array of nulls, an array of null pointers. Um, and I don't actually get any circle objects until I do this last piece of code here, which actually um, will create them for me. So now what I have is I have the variable A after this code is executed, which references one, two, three, four, five. And what I've done is, so when I is zero, I go into element zero right here. I create a new circle object with a radius of zero and then point that um, element to it. Then I go around the loop again. I is now one. So I'm creating a new circle and passing the constructor the radius of two, one times two. So now I get a new object out here with a radius of two. And then I get an object with a radius of four, circle with a radius of six, and a circle with a radius of eight. This is gonna look kind of messy here, but uh, this one goes here, this one goes here, and this one goes here, like that. Okay, so that's what an array of objects looks like in memory. There is an initial, um, hang on, let me just draw that better, um, a reference. Um, so when you, when you, uh, when you um, access a circle object, so if we look down here, we're saying go to A, so dereference A, which means go to the array, go to element 2, which is right here, uh, and then the dot after the element 2 there dereferences that and says go to this object and call its get radius method. Okay, um, so that's how you access uh, an array element. Um, right here, I, I'm kind of showing two ways to do it. So here I create a new circle variable. Let me use a new color here um, called C, and I'm assigning to it array A element 2, which is this element. So that copies this reference here over into C, which means C is now an alias to that one. So C dot get radius will return four, and A2 get radius will return four as well. Okay, let's go back to the code and, uh, and run it, just to make sure that it does do the things that I said it was gonna do. Um, control shift F10. Uh, so we're just looking at the first, there we go. I guess the radius is a double. So we get um, a four for those first two um, print lines. Um, if you wanna see this uh, you know, in action, um, you can say, uh, well, I can't print, I can't do anything with A here yet because I haven't assigned to it. But here I can do, I could do um, a system out print line of A, and then I could do a, a, maybe an enhanced for loop. So it, enhanced for loop works just the same way as it would for any other type. I'm gonna take um, everything out of A one at a time and put it into this new variable C, which is of type circle. Uh, and then I can do a system out print line of uh, C. Um, and what you're going to see here, so if we go back to the original picture here, at this point I'm claiming that it's an array of null pointers. So we should just see null coming out all over the place. I run this again and sure enough there's that piece of code there. It's, it's outputting um, the word null five times. So I ended up with, I have an array, uh, it's okay, I can, I can iterate through it. But what I get is five null pointers, and it's only down here. If I do this again down here, oh yeah, I also printed out A itself, which you can see right here. It says it's an array of type circle, of type week six code dot circle, and here's where it's at. Well, that's what it's telling me there. If I do this again, if I do system out print line C here, it'll call their two string method, except I didn't define one, so we'll just get here we go, these are my circle objects now. So initially when I create the array, they're all null. And then when I go through this piece of code and create the circles, I get um, a bunch of circle objects. And if I wanna see the radiuses, I can make it, oops, not get area, get radius here. And that will run that. Okay, uh, so there you go, you get zero, two, four, six, eight.
those are the radiuses. So I'm adding a little bit of code here to array of objects. Okay, so that's um, an array of objects. Okay, so three steps, create, declare the variable. Uh, you, you can do these two things in one line, obviously. Create the variable, then do something that looks like you're creating a new circle object, unless you look closely and realize that you have square brackets here, which means that you're actually creating an array of five circle variables, five circle reference variables. And when we print them out, we get all nulls. And then it's only when you do the third step to initialize them that you actually get circle objects. So then you go through the array and each array element assign to it a new circle object. And then when you print them out, you'll actually have circles. Okay, and then here we talked about accessing um, the get radius method here. Um, so like this, this is a piece of syntax you'll have to get a bit used to. Um, you use the array index like you normally would. And because it's an object, you can put a dot operator on the end of that. So here's some examples. Here I'm, I'm adding up the area, the total area of all the circles. So I set it to zero, and then I say total area plus equals ai.getArea. So I'm going through the circles from a up to a.length, and for each one I'm calling its getArea method, adding them all up. And I think this is the result of that right there. Um, right? Where are we? Yeah. Where are all those fives coming from? Um, so here I'm printing out four twice, that's there. Where are all those fives coming from? Oh, I know why, because over here there's, uh, for some reason, I must have done this in a previous class, I've put out a, a print line here, um, which really doesn't belong there. Um, so let's run that again. There we go. So now we're getting uh, the two, these are the two fours from uh, the print lines that are right here. And then I'm getting the total area here, going through the array. Uh, and here, I, here I'm doing the same thing using an enhanced for loop. So uh, again, it's like, like the one I wrote above. Um, this, now I can just say, because I'm just using, it makes things a little simpler, because I'm just using this variable called circle, which pulls out all the elements from A, I can just say circle.getArea and add them in there. Okay. Um, now one thing that you can do in an enhanced for loop for, a, for an array of objects that you cannot do um, in uh, an enhanced for loop for integers is that you can sort of make changes to the objects. So as we know, uh, like if we take a look at this, I showed you this earlier. Um, this doesn't work. If, if what we wanted to do was change all of, you know, initialize this whole integer array. So I'm creating an integer array object here. And if what I wanted to do was initialize it to 100, this actually won't work. And IntelliJ is trying to give me a clue here saying you're, you're assigning a value to E and then you're never using it. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to assign to all the array elements um, the value 100 and then print out um, the second value, but I'm getting zero. This does not work. Um, this one though does. So for, uh, again, I'm going through the enhanced for loop and I'm doing set radius, which is actually changing the radius of each item to 100. And then I'm printing it out this way, a2.getRadius. And the reason why uh, I can do this is that uh, is because of the way that these things are represented. So if I do another um, full screen snip here, here's a second one. So um, what's going on up here is I've got, again, I've got this, let me change this to maybe blue. There we go. So I've got um, A, which is a pointer, a reference, to um, a bunch of references like this. So each of these refers to a circle object. And I am calling their set radius method on each of these objects. So in each of these objects now, what I'm doing is I'm saying, um, okay, I got this circle variable here. Let's go to red here. And the way the enhanced for loop is works is one by one, I'm gonna go through the array um, that A is referencing, and I'm gonna copy the references into circle. So first I copy this into circle like this, and then I call set radius 100. Um, then I go to the next item and I copy this reference into here. And so now it's referencing this object, and now this becomes 100, and so on down the line. So they all become 
a hundred like that. And that's why it works. So then when I print out a two dot get radius, a two get radius, it becomes a hundred. Whereas down here in the integer array, um, so I have um, a variable called int array, which uh, as we know, will get uh, initialized to zeros. So everything gets initialized when an array is created to its zero element. So for objects, the zero, the zero value is null. So, but for an integer, the zero value is zero. Um, and then what we're doing here is, let's go back to red. We are creating a, a variable called e, and one by one, we're copying these values into here. So e gets copied into, uh, zero gets copied into e. Then we replace that with 100. Uh, of course, it makes no difference over here. It's not changing anything over here. Then we come around the loop again. We go to the next item. We copy zero into e. Uh, and then we copy 100 into E, and we keep doing that, and it makes no changes to what we consider to be the contents of the array here. Okay, so the kind of the bottom line is, um, when you have an array of objects, you can use an enhanced for loop to do more stuff with it, um, as long as, of course, you're not change, trying to change these values here. If you want to change the actual references, like create new circle objects and put them into the array, you have to use the, uh, the indexed loop for the same reason that it won't work here. If we create a new object and put it into circle, it's not going to change the objects that are in the array. So everything's really consistent, but the effect of it is that you can make changes. You can make changes to your array if it's an array of objects that you couldn't make change. You couldn't do some similar things. You couldn't make changes to your array if it was an array of integers. All right. So yeah, I, I go over this over and over and over again, and it's all cut, just comes down right from week one, I think, and it all just comes down to reference variables versus primitive types. And I just, I keep hammering it because you really have to get it. Um, otherwise you're gonna, you're gonna get yourself into all kinds of problems. If you don't fully understand it, um, it's gonna make debugging code more, more difficult. Um, it's gonna lead to uh, situations of privacy leaks and stuff like that. It's really important to understand how this, uh, how this works, how a reference variable works and how it's different how it's both different and exactly the same as another variable. It's exactly the same in the sense that these things stored here are just numbers, um, and, but it, it's uh, the way that we're treating those numbers is we're treating them as addresses in the memory. And that part, uh, that means that we can have aliases, we can have multiple variables pointing to the same part of memory, and we can make changes um, where we wouldn't be able to make changes to primitive types. Okay, um, so let's go to, let's just talk about this um, exercise. So it is um, listed in the exercises for week six. Um, this is the bouncing ball one. Um, so let me just show you what you need to do. Um, so there is a, there is a, here's the starter code. If I run bouncing balls, that's in, you'll have to get the week six code and you'll have to either remove test star field or comment out the, the parts of it that are broken um, in order to make this work or, or take bouncing balls and the ball class and move them into their own project so you can work on them separately. Um, and what you get is you get a single ball bouncing around. So I've kind of I kind of done the hard work for you of figuring out how to make a ball move using the animation template. Um, the ball class is right here, um, and you don't need to know how it works. I you know if you're curious about what's going on and you want to be able to do this kind of thing, uh, I'm happy to walk through it and explain how every part of it works. Um, but as as with most object oriented things, all you need to know is the interface. So um, you create a, a ball like this. You have to specify an X and a Y, an X speed and a Y speed, a size and a color, okay? Um, so the X and Y speed control which direction and how fast it moves. So if you set them both to zero, it won't move. If um, It's basically gonna move that number of pixels in each direction on each time step. If you set them both to one, it will go well, from my perspective down this way, I guess from your perspective down that way. Each time step, it'll move one X over and one Y down. Uh, if you make Y speed negative one and X positive, it'll go that way and so on. So if you wanna create a bunch of different balls and see them all go separately, you, when you create those balls, maybe use math.random to create random speeds. In fact, just math.random on its own will create uh, different speeds. They'll all be going the same direction, but in, but, but in different, uh, or similar directions anyway. They'll be going down and to the left, in different directions down and to the left. Uh, but using different speeds. If you do math.random times point, minus 0.5, you'll get some going up and some going down. And, uh, and if you multiply that by something, they'll get faster. 
Uh, if we go back and take a look at uh, the bouncing balls code, so what I want you guys to do, so this is the animation template. It's made using the animation template. So everything that you need to do is in the animate method down here. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm creating a single ball like this with an X speed of negative one and a Y speed of negative one. Um, and then I go into a, a forever loop where I draw, I set the colors, uh, I, I clear the screen by setting a color and clearing the screen. Then I tell the ball to draw itself and it, it, it does the, uh, the job of setting the color, that draw method uh, and drawing the ball. Then I call the ball's move one step method. Then I do a bit of bouncing for that ball. I, I, I process the bouncing. Then I pause, then I go back. Okay, so again, if you want to understand how it all works, again, I'm happy to go through it with you and, and explain it to you. But you don't need to know how it all works in order to be able to change this in from one ball to 50 balls. Okay, so um, what you need to do is instead of a single ball variable, you need to create an array of balls. You need to initialize that array. And when you do that, you need to randomize some parts of it. So at least randomize the speed. You might even want to randomize the size or the color or the starting position of the balls. It's up to you. Uh, and then anytime I'm, I'm referencing ball in here, like here or here or this code here, you're going to have to wrap it in an array so that you do these steps for every single ball. And if you use an enhanced for loop, sorry, you have to put it inside a loop, not inside an array. If you use an enhanced for loop, um, you might not even have to change this code at all or this code at all. Um, there is one thing in here that we haven't seen before, which is this run later. Uh, it was always mentioned in the comments here. Um, you don't have to put this in order for the, the code to work. If, if that platform run later thing is giving you problems, um, you can take it out and um, your program will still work. Uh, it's just that after running for a while, it's probably going to freeze up. Um, the reason is just that we're not, we're not supposed to be updating the screen um, from this thread, from a thread that's outside of the normal screen updating thread. So what you're supposed to do is, if you want to make sure that that doesn't happen, that your that your screen doesn't freeze, um, and I don't mean your computer is going to freeze, just that one screen with the ball bouncing will freeze up. Um, you do this. You say um, we want to schedule this code to run at a time when it's convenient for the system to do it. Um, this is something called an arrow function, uh, or um, sometimes called a lambda expression. Uh, but basically, just copy this and this and put your drawing code in here. Um, and you may run into problems if you use the wrong kind of loop, unfortunately. Um, so try to wrap, put the, if you put loops and stuff in here, it's going to cause you problems. So just try to put the draw method um, and stuff like that in here. Uh, don't put any loops or anything. Um, so use platform run later around the code. And it'll stop it from freezing out. But if it's if if this code is giving you issues, uh, don't let it stop you doing the assignment. Just delete this and delete this and act like it's not there. And just accept the fact that after it runs for a, a couple minutes, it might freeze up on you. Um, okay. All right. So I'm going to have another video where I go uh, go over the solution to this. I show you my solution, um, and I'm going to give you another exercise based on the star field over here. Um, so uh, that'll be the the last video, and then it'll be the assignment.